start doing all chat field. Start doing the presentation sure. that kind of cascades into 9, 10, and 11 tonight. Sure. So Paul Chatfield from MRB, uh, Engineering Associates, uh, and then MRB Group. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, tonight I'm going to give a, a very brief presentation on the uh, Bosberg pump station, which uh, is the largest pump station in town. It was uh, constructed in 1980, 44 years ago, and uh, I'm just going to run through and show you some pictures and uh, just talk about a few things, but this is the, uh, the pump station uh, structure. So the station was constructed in 1980 uh, and is located at 601 Bosberg Road. Uh, the pump station serves a portion of the uh, Town of Webster and also accepts flow from uh, a portion of the town of Penfield through Monroe County uh, Pure Waters uh, diversion structure. And uh, I've got to tell you, as I've told you before, related to this, our uh, patron and the sewer department you know, really do a, a remarkable job in, uh, in operating the system and being uh, stewards to the system. Um, in 2021 and 22, MRB Group put together a uh, comprehensive analysis of the uh, pump station and the uh, force main that leaves the treatment plant. And uh, what we found through that analysis is that there is uh, significant um, operational and maintenance problems that have plagued the, the pump station over the past several years and a comprehensive <coughs> implementation of the station is, is necessary. Um, the town uh, has the opportunity at this point to apply for a, a Water Infrastructure Improvement Act, a WIA grant, as we call it, uh, which may provide the opportunity for up to 25% uh, uh, funding for the project. The grant application requires three things. Preparation of the final engineering report. So we take that engineering report that we put together in uh, 2022 and updated it with the um, final engineering report that was dated June 3rd, 2024. Um, the second thing is to complete the environmental review process, uh, commonly referred to as the secret process. The third thing is a bond resolution for the entire cost of the project needs to be um, passed by the board, all three of these items are required relating to the grant application uh, document. So uh, just a couple of concerns that uh, we have identified uh, in the station. The useful life of the pump station has been exceeded. Typically a pump station, uh, you know, many of the components would have a useful life anywhere from 30 to 40 years. Some components, of course, last a little bit longer than that, uh, but significant improvements are necessary. There's one pump that's unused, uh, unable to be uh, serviced, limiting the pump station's capacity, uh, causing backup of the wet well, which uh, I believe, Patty, you uh, witnessed that in October 16th of 2021. Somewhere around 10.30 p.m. on a Friday night yesterday. Right. <laughs> I recall that, yeah. Um, so operating on a reduced pumps and uh, due to valves not functioning is a uh, very significant problem. And our, you can jump in anytime you have anything to, to add. Actually, I do. So within the last uh, six weeks, uh, we've had uh, two failures uh, with our pumps. Uh, one of them has rotted through. Uh, we cannot take the pump uh, apart. So we, uh, if anybody knows about JV well, it's a uh, pipe. And to fight it together to stop the leaks. Uh, also, uh, one of our other pumps, which we've already uh, rebuilt uh, the second time, uh, is uh, failing quickly. We are in the process of getting a used component in our facility. We're going to rebuild that uh, to save the town uh, probably close to $80,000 as opposed to buying a new pump. Uh, one of the parts we're actually having machined is a stainless steel sleeve. I think about it's a two, six inches long, four inches round. Uh, that part uh, 
one piece of it is $5,400 uh, because of the use of these four million machines that can pay for a thousand. So uh, the, the station's going downhill. Uh, I think somebody had mentioned the staff is uh, very talented. We hired good people and they're able to keep this thing going. But for how long, I don't know. Yeah. Just, these are just some pictures of the uh, um, components of this uh, pump station. Um, so the pumps are antiquated, as our Art had said. Parts are difficult to uh, to obtain. Uh, the ventilation system is inoperable. It's rotted out. Excessive corrosion creates an unsafe condition. Um, the bypass uh, pump system is inadequately um, sized and unusable, uh, and the wet well capacity is very small. So uh, taking a, a pump out of service and having a, a high flow in the uh, pump station coming into the station can cause a problem. And here's just a picture of the ventilation system, uh, the components. It's a very corrosive atmosphere. Could you just go back to that? Sure. On the left side, you see a block. Is the block in good condition or is a step down? Is that an issue? Yep. So um, as part of the analysis that we did, uh, we included an allowance in the uh, budget for structural repairs, and we have identified some uh, structural concerns that need to be addressed. Okay. Uh, typical uh, like this, which uh, is some kind of a uh, settlement that has occurred over the course of time. Uh, there are a number of things that would be addressed from a structural standpoint. Now, is that a bug grade or below grade? That is a bug grade. Interesting. Yep. Before you move on, Paul, uh, you can notice the uh, the yellow hoist on the uh, top of that picture. Uh, that hoist is uh, no longer operable. It's been rotted out uh, because there's uh, no air exchange in that room. Uh, and uh, even if it was operable, the hoist is obsolete. Uh, so we've been changing those out at, uh, within the plant and other pump stations as well. So to pull mixer that is uh, below ground there. Uh, the, our staff has to get up on ladders, uh, hook up chains and so forth. Not the uh, most safe thing in the world. We do it the best we can and safest we can, uh, but we do not have operating frames that voice anything. Okay. This is just a picture of the, uh, of the pumps, uh, two of the existing pumps that are in the station. Some of the existing valves are inoperable, as I had mentioned. The emergency generator is original uh, construction 1980 and is scheduled to uh, be replaced. The electrical controls are all, also from 1980. Many components are antiquated and, uh, and will be uh, completely replaced also. Can you go back to that, please? So on the right side of that picture, there's a uh, blue uh, display screen and there's a taped piece of paper there. And on that says, do not touch this, this, or this. That's how bad the 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 we are definitely stay the art. <laughs> um, here's a uh, a real big concern. This is uh, this gray line is this large line is the force main on the discharge side of the pumps, and the uh, green lines are uh, chemical lines um, that are currently not in operation, but are connected to the force main and have, are significantly corroded in uh, a catastrophic failure of the uh, force main you know, would occur if that line um, was broken, uh, severed as a result of the corrosion. It's a, a very large concern. Um, force main uh, bypass pumping system, again, is too small. Uh, the force main <coughs> discharge manhole, um, um, uh, yeah. Shoemaker, Shoemaker um, has significantly deteriorated. I have a picture of that, and that needs to be completely replaced. Uh, air relief valves, there's two of them in the system. They are old and need to be replaced. Here's a picture of the, uh, there should be two um, air release valves. You see that there's only one uh, that's a, in place and one that is 
out of service, and I believe that even the ones in service uh, doesn't have sugar. So that's correct. The other one brought it off uh, many years ago. Right. Here's a picture of the force being discharged into the manhole uh, just before it goes into the large diameter gravity sewer, and you see the significant corrosion that occurs from the hydrogen sulfide that um, <coughs> is introduced into the system at that uh, force main discharge. Significant uh, problem. So the recommendations are a comprehensive pump, pump station rehab. Um, bypass the pump station during construction to facilitate a quicker construction period. Uh, structural and ventilation improvements in the uh, wet well. Uh, replacement of all the pumps, piping, and valves, etc., inside the station. Uh, install three new um, 2310 uh, gallon per minute pumps. And installation of a new flow meter. And you say new flow meter. There is no flow meter. We have no idea what's going out of that station. Yeah, would, would it be safe to say, Art, that in 1980 a lot less went in and out of that station than today? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so these are just some of the components to, uh, to be completed. Installation of security measures, um, and again, replacement of that force main discharge uh, made or shoe maker. So uh, we have a summary of uh, total estimated uh, project costs. Uh, the total estimated project cost is uh, $5.7 million. Uh, the project will require uh, that the project be bid utilizing uh, Wick's law, which is uh, the multiple prime contracts, so general construction, plumbing, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and <coughs> it's mandated by uh, state law. Uh, so there would be four uh, prime contracts, and there would be a contingency, and there would be uh, legal, administration, and en engineering service costs associated with the project. So we rounded it off to uh, $5,700,000. Uh, $5, so before we move off that screen, Paul, sure. um, when the low bids come back in, when we get to that point in the process, um, the three million five hundred sixty-two thousand four ninety-nine. Uh, we'll, we'll know if that estimate was equal, high, or low compared to the bids. Um, okay, and I mean we're we just did a highway draft. We're we bonded for twenty-eight million, and we're thinking it's coming in more like twenty-three because the bids came in better. The low line of the construction cost contingency, having a million dollars in contingency, which is your rainy day fund, if nothing comes up that surprises us, we don't spend a million dollars. This is conservative. Uh, and then the legal administration, all that, it's an estimate, but that is time and materials. How do we, uh, I mean, there's, Legal admin, a lot of legal is our legal cost, uh, administration costs, and that is the uh, MRV engineering uh, piece. Planning council, planning council, right? Yeah, yeah. planning council, consulting. I understand, I'm sorry, I understand yeah. what they are, but they get managed through the process and monitored, and, it's, and it can, they can come in less than that in aggregate. That's correct, yes. Okay. Is the bypass cost in uh, general construction? Yes, yes. And I went through that, because that screen that people can see and whatever, we're, if we do a bond resolution tonight for $5.7 million, the biggest misconception in the public is that tomorrow, Paul, you're going to go borrow $5.7 million. No, not at all. Yeah. Um, probably you should be going less than that, especially if you get a grant. Yes. And I'm not going to, Paul, you already explained, why we're doing these things right now, 9, 10, 11 uh, resolutions. Is, uh, when we had grant that we're applying for, which is approximately a quarter of this 5.7 million, the deadline to apply for it is June 14th. That would be next Friday. And uh, Empire Facilities Corporation, EFC, mandates or manages the VIA grant applications. If you don't have the boxes checked to see here these things we're doing tonight, you're not, you can 
considered for an award. So. Thanks, sir. And thank you, Paul. Okay. Uh, project schedule, really quickly. Um, we anticipate it will take somewhere between 21 months and 30 months to uh, to get from starting to put together the uh, plans to uh, completing construction. So, um, real quickly, uh, risk of waiting, catastrophic failure is possible. Uh, currently operating the station, the station without full capacity. Uh, increase operational costs by doing nothing and increase future, future capital costs by waiting. Um, we've seen costs you know, rise pretty significantly over the years. Um, all components, pumps, motors, generators, electrical system is all well beyond their useful life and are likely uh, to fail at some point in the future. Yes, I actually do. Uh, so, Supervisor, you had mentioned 22 pump stations, and we talked about uh, Clem Road and Vaughnwood. Um, so, of the 22 pump stations, obviously Clem uh, is, a, is a very large pump station, Vaughnwood is our largest. We have a, uh, numerous smaller pump stations that we, in my seven years, we've begun to upgrade and we will continue to upgrade proactively. Uh, those we can do uh, mainly uh, with our staff within our operating budgets. These large stations, we do not have the bandwidth uh, to do it. So everything we can do uh, year to year, we try to do uh, again in-house and uh, keep costs down and uh, keep them down pretty good. You know, I say it again, layman terms, uh, I've learned a lot in four plus years of sanitary sewer. Uh, <coughs> I'm fascinated. Um, if all of your houses were up here on a hill and our businesses were to do and the sewer plant was down here, we don't need pump stations, do we? Pump stations, I mean, sewage is great when it's gravity leading it to the sewer plant. But when you have to go up to get to the sewer plant, that's when a pump station is needed, and I don't mean to... I just, I didn't know what a pump was. I didn't need a pump station when I first heard it. It's very logical. Um, it's a great thing. It's kind of like a lock on the Erie Canal. Um, and the pump pushes it up to the next level where it then will go gravity fed down to the sewer plant. Um, this is that simple. Um, I guess. And that's what we have 400 miles of main. Something like that. Yeah, about that. Yeah. And you uh, think about that in this town, 35 square mile town, we have 400 miles of sewer main throughout the town that somehow spider through these uh, pump stations and end up in a roaring river if you ever want to see something crazy at the sewer plant on Phillips Road. Um, and they have to maintain that 400 miles of sewer main. Um, wherever you live, if you're on the sewer system, your house laterals in to one of those sewer mains. Um, it's unbelievable. It really is. It's kind of an engineering marvel. Uh, so. But they rot. They <laughs> rot. And, you know, and, and I, I use the word proactive uh, twice a minute. Yeah. Uh, this is not proactive. It's well beyond its uh, yes. Its life. Yes. So. Um, the only question I can oh, go ahead. Excuse me, is, is, you know, if you look at these pictures, and obviously there's some serious problems that are involved that are both brought that to our attention. My only question is, looking at a timetable of about 21 months, in the event that there's this catastrophic event at that pump station, we have plans yet. So that's a great question. Um, we do have some very good uh, partners uh, in this industry. Uh, one being MRB. We have some very good partner uh, contractors, and we just deal with it as it comes. Uh, it's you know you can only plan so much. Um, we talked about the pumps, and I, 
I get. I really have a hard time throwing new pumps at this for you know, 80, 90, 100,000 dollars and more. Right. Um, let's just re repair them, let's keep costs down because we know, well, I hope, for the town's good and for the residents' good, that this will be, you know, we'll get a grant and move forward and so forth. Uh, we do what we can. Our committee's listening to this. And John, I'm glad you asked that question. If I understand it correctly, uh, the sewer department uses a lot of almost like it's like a heart bypass. If you, would, if you have a problem with something snaps and breaks, well, the flow doesn't stop. We can't call all of you and say, hey, listen, you got to stop using your toilets for a couple of days until we fix that. That's not how it works. You have to figure out with the engineers and contractors how to bypass with some. Generated whatever pushes push it back up because the flow can't stop. You have to figure out how to keep the flow going and not have it just go all over outside on the lawn and out to all the places. Is that an accurate way to describe it? That, that, that's absolutely accurate. Uh, there's some very big high gas pumps that uh, will be put in place that will be uh, engineered. Mm -hmm. They're, they're specialists in their field. Is the cost of running a bypass pretty expensive when something like that happens? It is. Yeah. But approximately, you know, just, a, just the pumps alone, uh, probably $60,000 a month. Yeah. yeah. So we got a plan for the cat yeah. to do a ca catastrophic thing. Right. It's just going to be a band aid at $360,000 a month pump, not to also include the the materials of the bypass pipe and all that stuff. So we haven't fun yet, everybody. <laughs> My wife says, "Stop going out when we're going out for cocktails and dinner and talking about the sanitary sewers." I find it fascinating. Okay, um, so these next three uh, resolutions pertain to what we've been talking about for the last 20 minutes in that presentation. Um, so I. I know that two or three weeks ago we came in and gave the intention of the town board being the lead agency for Seeger. We are now going to declare ourselves as lead agency. So, does the board have any questions on that process? I'm going to make a motion to declare lead agency for the State of Oregon Quality Review Seeger for the Phosphor Home Station Improvement Project to the town board. Second. Aye. 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 I would move to issue a secret determination of significance for the Bosworth Pump Station Improvement Project and to authorize the town supervisor to sign part three of the secret form. And at the moment, I wish the councilman have it was sitting next to me. Mm -hmm. Don't be offended by that. Because do I need to include what we're declaring this? Uh, is this since we're doing the part three form? Does that pretty much say what we declared it to be type type one? Thank you. A, a type one action. Second. Councilman Kitali. Aye. Councilman Kahlil. Aye. Councilman James. Aye. I only say that because he was the secret <laughs> yes. yes, that's a pretty important part of the mm -hmm. to look at this resolution 10 years from now. I, I heard him whispering in my ear. Yes. <coughs> yes. Bill whisper? No, he would have been yelling in your ear. Come on. Okay. <laughs> um, and then, just for all, everybody, if, when we do this next resolution, we're not running out and borrowing $5.7 million tomorrow. Any questions on this bond resolution by the board? No. Make a motion for the Glassburg Pump Station Improvement Project to be bonded in an amount not to exceed $5,700,000. Second. Supervisor Clarity? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilman Dolly? Aye. Councilman Aye. Aye. Councilman Aye. 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 Aye.